So this conversation is always a fun one to have, and it certainly is not going to ruffle any feathers amongst the Edmonton Oilers fan base. Today we are talking about Evander Kane because of a few comments made in the media by guys like Elliot Friedman and Frank Saravelli. These comments could be seen as a little bit confrontational and maybe not aligning with what the Oilers fan base themselves feels about this guy. We have made our few videos about Evander Kane in the past. Most recently, I think we talked about the drama between him and Leon Dreisaitl because that was an interesting conversation that was brought up. But ever since that last video that we made in regards to Evander Kane, there seems to have been a little bit more talk to be had. Evander Kane this season is at 39 points, 68 games played as a 20, excuse me, not 20, 32-year-old forward now, 6'2", 209 left-handed guy, signed till the end of 2025-2026, making $5.1 million a year. He is certainly not producing as much this season as he was in his first season, let's just say, with the Oilers, where he was pretty much a point-per-game guy. He was under a point-per-game in the regular season, over a point-per-game in the playoffs. This was after the entire controversy that happened in San Jose. He found himself on the Oilers afterwards. He had 28 points in 41 games played last year, but this season he's got 39 and 68. On pace for about 46 points in a full 80-game campaign, on pace for about 25 goals as well. Not the worst numbers in the world, to be frank. Like, this number? Sure, you could say maybe it's a little bit expected for 5.125 mil, but for the most part, most of the conversations regarding Evander Kane have spawned because of events over the last few weeks. In particular, we're talking about an article posted on HockeyLatest.com because this article summarizes most of the quotes that we care about. Evander Kane's time running out in Edmonton, according to Insider, this was published earlier today. I'll leave a link in the description. Evander Kane had an impressive start to the season this year. However, he is reportedly causing issues in the Oilers' dressing room and his play has declined. According to Frank Saravelli, Kane's time in Edmonton may just be running out and he believes the Oilers may have to address him prior to next season. Here's what he had to say in the video, which will be linked in the description as well because this was posted on the Twitter and you could see the replies and everything. But the quote made by Saravelli is read out here. Evander Kane's act is wearing thin. It's a tale as old as time. He starts off really well in any new place that he goes to, and it's like a coach the clock begins to tick. At some point, the Oilers will probably have to address it before his contract is up. It may or may not be as soon as this summer, but he wears out his welcome. And Saravelli is very opinionated about this. He pretty much says that this happens all the time with Evander Kane, that, oh, we'll see if the Oilers have to address it, if they have to send him away at some point. Saravelli, of course, talked about this on the Oilers Nation pod, so he's kind of striking at the heart of the Oilers fan base. And a lot of fans are really really disliking this weak take, Frank. My eyes could not roll any further into my skull. There's a reason Frank doesn't have a con- oh, that's nasty. Oh my goodness. You should be ashamed of yourself, everybody should be boycotting, yada yada yada, Evander's a problem, fans don't run players out of this city, we all know who does, is it the media, is it the fans, who really knows? Can Kane just have a bad stretch and get out of it? I don't see Toffoli and Gensel just killing it, goal scorers go through doubts. Talk is cheap, yada yada yada, a lot of people don't like this take here by Frank Saravelli, but it was interesting enough that I thought we could talk about it here, because in this article that I'm pulling from, there was another comment made also by Elliot Friedman in discussion about what happened on Saturday night. This was during the game against the Toronto Maple Leafs, where Evander Kane was there, and there was the arguing with Drysaddle on the bench. Elliot Friedman had to say this, What I didn't like on Saturday night, McDavid and Drysaddle got pushed around. If I was in the organization of the Oilers, I would not have liked how McDavid and Drysaddle were treated in Toronto. There's nothing wrong with what the Maple Leafs did to them, they should try and rough them up. But it's on yourselves to protect them. And... This was highlighted during the physical play. Evander Kane should have stepped up for them, but he failed to do so. And this resulted in a Sunday night scratch for maintenance reasons. And a lot of people were making a really big deal out of Evander Kane getting scratched. Oh, like, is it because of the arguing with Dreisaitl? Is it because of the drama there? They said maintenance reasons, so we're just going to go with that. Nothing really else to say there. I mean, the Oilers are good enough where it's like, I think you could effectively take maintenance days for some of your top players and still be able to survive the season. 
But there was a lot of speculation about the scratching on Sunday. Why did that happen? How long is Kane going to be out for? He did return to the lineup recently, and he did have some good chances, but... You still have takes like this going out there and presenting themselves on OilersNation.com's podcast out of all places where Frank Cervelli says, yeah, the Oilers are going to have to evaluate where exactly they go with this. It may or may not be as soon as this summer, but he wears out his welcome. So... Could we see some sort of an Evander Kane trade? With a contract that goes on till the end of 25-26, I do think the contract is movable, and I would say the dollar amount is good enough, where it's like, yeah, if you can get 40 to 50 points out of this guy every single year, that's not the worst thing in the world. Sure, you would prefer him to be a point-per-game guy like he was in 2021-2022, but if that's not guaranteed, at the very least being a 50-55 point guy who gets maybe 25 to 30 goals a year, I think that's okay for the cap hit. It's just... The same thing brings itself up with Evander Kane as it did when the Oilers signed him in the first place. There is baggage there. This is a guy who has had a lot of controversy in San Jose. There was some drama with the Edmonton Oilers that you could debate was or was not there, depending on which media sources you go out there and look at. We made an entire video talking about Evander Kane and Dreisaitl because that was a conversation that was percolating. And now, because you have insiders going out there on podcasts saying that, yeah, this guy's going to have to get dealt with soon... It does kind of pique my interest as to where the rest of the NHL is going to look at this. For what it's worth, Andy and Rona went out there and said that Evander Kane has not been as good this season as he should be. I wasn't surprised. He was only a healthy scratch in the last game. He is at a 21 percentile wins above replacement number. He has ice time like a first line player, but his offensive impact is down there at only 39 percent in comparison to the rest of the league. That is a negative number. His transition numbers are slightly better, but they're still negative, and his defensive numbers are some of the worst in the NHL. So, Evander Kane hasn't really been playing the best this season. He wasn't healthy scratched. Oh, okay, yeah, maintenance day. Yeah, different thing, right? So Evander Kane hasn't really been the best this season, but I feel like the sentiment amongst Oilers fans from this reply section as well as the comment section in our last video has been more so forgiving, saying, hey, the media is so hard on this guy, why do they keep on targeting and targeting Evander Kane? But then you have to think about it from the perspective of the insiders as well. They're going out there with an opinion that for sure isn't like unique. I'd say that there is maybe a few other people that would say that Evander Kane and his situation in Edmonton is quote-unquote toxic, but my question is how far is that going to go? Does it result in some sort of an Evander Kane trade between now and next season, for example, has he officially worn out his welcome in the words of Frank Saravelli? Edmonton Oilers fans, feel free to get nasty in the comments section defending your guy because I have seen it before. Y'all very much like this player, so I definitely won't feel bad about it if y'all go out there and start hating on me in the comments for making this video. You know, it's just a circle of life, right? But either way, I wanted to bring this conversation onto the channel because of Frank Saravelli's comments as well as what Friedman said in regards to the game on Saturday night. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Evander Kane and his entire career career in Edmonton, whether or not it's worth continuing down this path, or is there going to be some sort of a trade at some point in the future? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.